Since the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi, experts in Japan and abroad have expressed concern about the safety of the fuel rod stored in reactor number four. The fuel pool contains more than 1,500 rods, the highest number at the plant, and could pose a threat in the event of another earthquake. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, says it's ready to perform a trial run for the removal of the fuel rods. The trial run is part of efforts to decommission the plant. It will involve removing two unused rods from the spent fuel pool at Reactor 4 and transferring them to a nearby storage facility. The Japanese government approved on Thursday the safety measures for the test. They include checking radiation levels with an underwater camera to select unused fuel rods. The special container used for the transfer will be attached to four cables for extra security. TEPCO says it cannot reveal the date of the test for security reasons. If successful, the utility plans to start removing the rest of the fuel rods in 2013. And very high levels of radiation are hampering operations to decommission other reactors at the plant. TEPCO engineers measured a maximum of 360 millisieverts per hour in the basement of reactor 3. That means a worker would reach the maximum exposure allowed in one year in less than 17 minutes. TEPCO sent a remote-controlled robot for the first time to the room where the suppression chamber is located. The robot detected levels of radiation exceeding 100 millisieverts per hour at several locations. But the operation didn't end smoothly. Engineers lost control of the robot due to problems with the connecting cable, and they're unable to retrieve the device at this point. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda says he is making the revitalization of Fukushima his top priority. The nuclear accident contaminated parts of the prefecture and devastated its economy. Noda released a new plan aimed at turning things around. NHK World's Mayuko Ambe has details. Fukushima is a shadow of its once vibrant self. Towns and villages surrounding the nuclear plant appear deserted. The ghostly figures of decontamination crews dot the landscape. Tens of thousands of residents have been forced to live in temporary housing. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda says fixing the problems in Fukushima is his number one national policy. His cabinet approved a plan to revitalize the prefecture. It says his government will continue to be active in decontamination work. The plan sets a goal of reducing residents' exposure levels to one millisievert per year or lower in the long term. That's in line with international standards. The plan addresses the mounds of toxic topsoil that are piling up because of the cleanup effort. It says government officials will consider temporarily storing the contaminated dirt on state-owned property. The impact of radioactive material on public health is one of the major concerns in Fukushima. Noda is promising to subsidize thyroid tests for children to check for signs or symptoms of exposure. The plan doesn't mention raising subsidies for businesses operating in the prefecture, even though Fukushima authorities strongly requested the addition. However, it does reflect the prefecture's goal of creating communities that don't depend on nuclear power. The Prime Minister wants to promote the introduction of renewable resources. His goal is for green energy projects to create jobs. The problems in Fukushima seem to pile up with each passing month. 160,000 people still can't go home. A significant number of residents don't have work. Some people in the prefecture say the new plan lacks concrete details. They want the government to work harder and work faster so they can restart the lives they were leading before the disaster changed everything. Last year's nuclear accident prompted the evacuation of tens of thousands of residents from areas around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. But several municipalities were evacuated only weeks later after radioactive contamination had already spread. Now some evacuees are demanding special compensation from the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company. 
Nagadoro District is located in the municipality of Itate, some 30 kilometers northwest from Fukushima Daiichi. Government officials ordered the evacuation of residents one month after the nuclear accident, despite high levels of radiation. 159 residents from Nagadoro filed a claim Friday with a state-backed legal arbitrator. They say existing compensation guidelines don't cover radiation exposure caused by delayed evacuation. They're seeking $50 million from Tokyo Electric Power Company for mental distress and damages to their property. I wish the villagers had been told to flee right after the accident. We want our land and houses back, but since that's impossible right now, we're seeking to obtain proper compensation from the utility. Radiation levels in Nagadoro remain high. The government is set to declare the district uninhabitable for at least 10 years. Okay, Dad, what's the problem? Hello, Betty. What's the problem? I haven't got a problem. I've got fucking problems. Plural. Want to hear? Sure. Well, most recently... This is the newspaper man. I pity the newspaper man Who cannot understand The way that he's been tricked to lie With methods underhand Who takes his cues from falsity From those who Metal death to cover up the truth of things with each mendacious breath. I pity the newspaper man who waves his arms and smiles. arguments construct his truth with journalistic guile who carefully selects his source to back his twisted cause whose face reveals his inner pain his falseness and his flaws I 
I pity the newspaper man in his every living hour. His isolated loneliness, his emptiness and power. A man who as a communist kills children every day. They won't die. In fact, that'll be our motto. They won't die. I'll count the money.